In this tutorial, we are going to cover how to filter date and timestamps in Google Sheets. So what's a date and timestamp, or DTS for short? Date and timestamps are essentially a date followed by a time. Now the sharp-eyed of you out there at the moment might be looking at the dates and thinking, hey, this is a little bit weird. If you are from the US, Philippines, or Canada, you will probably do your dates with the month first followed by the day. Now I'm from Australia, like other Commonwealth nations, we do our day followed by the month followed by the year. Now you're all smart cookies, so I'm sure you can do the mental rotation throughout this tutorial. If you want to play along, and I encourage that you do, there's a starter sheet in the link in the description below. So pause the video now, grab that starter sheet, and when you're ready, hit play, and we'll crack back on. Okay, you're back. Let's get started. So the easiest way to filter a date and timestamp in Google Sheets is to use a cell reference. So let's just do that first. So let's uh, hit equals in cell D6 and go filter. And then we want to select our range. Now our range is over the left hand side here. It includes a name and a date and timestamp. We can have other uh, columns that we want to reference as well, but we're keeping it simple for this tutorial. So what range do we want to display? So it's going to be from A2 all the way through to B2 and then all the way down to B94. Awesome. So what's our condition? Our condition starts with the column that we want to set our condition by. And for us, that is going to be our DTS column or date timestamp column. So that will be B2 to B94. And we want that equal to our cell reference. So we're going to use the equal operator and then simply click our cell reference. Finally, we will close our filter with a bracket and hit tab. And as you can see, we have two people that match this date criteria, and that is Orion Neal and Taylor Lopez. Over on the left-hand side here, you'll notice that there is a green formula, and I've got that throughout this tutorial just to help you see and a personal reference for you when you take this away after the tutorial. So we've got the basic one underway. What if we want to put everything inside the one formula and not reference any cells? So intuitively, you might think that we could reference a date as a string in here. So let's see what happens if we do that. So you know already it's going to be an error because we've got a little error bit over here. So I'm going to click on D6 and then up into the formula bar. I'm going to hit Control A to select all, hit Control C to copy, and just head over to this H6 here, back into the formula bar, Control V to paste. Now let's just put in our cell reference here. So it's going to be the... I'll hide this for now. 18th. 01. 024. With a time of 752 colon 16 seconds in the morning. Now you can already see there's an angry red underline here that it won't work. There you go. What about if we wanted to make this as a value here? So we'll get rid of, of those double quotation marks. Will that work? Seems like it might. No, nope. error again, formula pass error. Okay, so what can we do? Value to the rescue. So the way dates and times work in Google Sheets is that they are set as a value in the background. These dates here that you see displayed aren't actually what's being stored in the Google Sheet. Let me explain. So if I type in equals here and value, and then select this date up here, and then close the brackets, you can see that we've got a floating point number that contains a large whole number and then a bunch of decimal points here. Now those decimal points may extend out uh, for a large amount as well. So how has this all worked out? So this 45,309 is the number of days since the 30th of December, 1899. Now this is a common reference that's also in Excel and OpenOffice software as well. So I have a proof of concept. I'm just gonna use a little function here in Google Sheets called to underscore date here. And I'll just put in zero. And as you can see, the zero of day is the 30th of 12th, 1899. So there's been 45,309 days since then. So on the right hand side is going to be all the hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, microseconds, and so on for the current day. So now that we have that in the back of our minds, what we need to do first is convert our date into a value using the value function. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back, let's go back up here and grab this and we will select all in our formula bar on H6, tab out, back down to H12, back into the formula bar, control V. And let's just put, let's just put in the value now around these double quotation marks, value, and then close the brackets, and hit tab. So now we have the same as we have over here in D6 to E7. Excellent, everything's working fine. What about if we want to display all the values before or after a particular date time step? Let's go up here and figure it out. So first we might type in equals filter, and then we'll get our range, this A2 to B94, comma, and then our condition is going to be B2 to B94. Now we can use the less than operator here, and then reference our cell reference just like we did with the first example, and hit tab. So now we have all the date timestamps after this date timestamp here. Cool, and we could do the same again with the value. So let's just go ahead and maybe grab this one's probably the easiest for us to copy. So H12 here, back into the formula bar, hit Control A, Control C, back to L18, formula bar again, Control V to paste, and all we need to do here is just change the operator. Super simple. Now let's send operator here, and that's got our dates for the 18th of the 1st, 2024 at 752.16. Okay, what about if we wanted to include that date as well? So we could say less than or equal to, and you can see that we've got a couple of dates that match that particular date in here. Remember, it's uh, 752.16, that's these two options here. What about if we want to see all the values that are greater than? So we can use the greater than or equal to operator here. If we don't want to include the, the current date timestamp, we can remove the equals here. One last thing we could possibly do is to, to display all the values except the current date. Let's hit tab. So you can see now that we've got the 18th of the 1st, 2024. Let's go there, 18th of the 1st, 2024. But the time 752.16 is not there at all. Cool, let's just make that a less than or equal to again, and we're done. Next thing we might wanna do is get the range between two DTS. So let's go ahead and do that with a cell reference. All we need to do, let's go back to this L6 here, and Control A, Control C, and tab out. Head back to P6, back into the formula bar for P6, Control V to paste, and What's the first thing we need is this top one here in P3. So let's say we want everything greater than or equal to, is it four? P3, P4, P4, P4. Okay, and usually when we want between two periods, we want to include those periods. So I'll keep a uh, greater than or equal to there. And then I'm going to select this range and just copy it over into the next condition. And then we want less than or equal to Q, four, and hit tab. So now we've got our range including these two dates and displaying that range here. Cool. And we, of course we can do the same with our value. So let's grab our value from L18 and have a bit of a duplicate. Back over to P31, back into the formula bar, control V to paste, and here we want to change some things. So we want anything greater than or equal to to this date. And then I'm going to, oops, and then I'm going to select the value. So this condition here, control C, and uh, put a comment in for our next condition, control V. And let's make a date, let's make it uh, possibly this one here. So I'm just gonna tab out for now. And let's make a larger date. We started on 18th. Let's go through to the 29th, eh? Oh, let's go to the 30th. I think there's some Februarys in there. Yeah, there are. Let's make it the 8th. There we go, we'll copy that. Control C. Back into our formula, this P31. Head up to the formula bar and just copy and paste that in there. The Control V and tap. Cool, so now we've got the ranges between the 8th to the 2nd, 2024 at 6.46.03 in the morning through to the 14th of the 2nd, 2024 at 9. 
Sometimes you would just want, you want to grab a bunch of date stamps that are after a certain time. Now, obviously time is in here, but it, ahead of the time is also the date. So how do we handle for that? If you've been watching the previous tutorials, you'll probably notice that there is a time value function as well that we can apply to these times here using the array formula. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So let's say we want all the, we want to grab all the date timestamp ranges after 9 a.m. only. So first we need to create a list of time values. So a list of time values would look something like this. Let's jump down here for a quick example. Time value. And remember, time values are only going to be those decimal point numbers. Let's give one as an example, this one over here. You can see that it is uh, 0.28, but we want this full range here from B2 to B94. So if I tried that and said B2 colon B94 and close my brackets, I'd only be able to display the first value. But what I can do is add in the array formula function to iterate over each one of those cells in the range. So let's go array formula brackets and then close brackets. Hit tab. So now we've got a range of all the times as a value. Awesome. Okay, so we've got that there is our basis. Let's go ahead and in the formula bar, we'll hit control A, then control X, uh, X to cut and hit tab. And then we don't have that ugly mess down here. And let's add that into our filter. And we'll paste that in there. And okay, so on the left hand side here, we'll add in our filter. Open up our brackets. A2, 2, B, 94. For our range. And then our condition range is going to be this array formula. Now on the other side of that, we want to make it, uh, let's make it greater than 9 a.m. And then click our cell reference in T4 and then close our brackets and hit tab. Awesome. And you can see it there. To wrap things up, let's use the time value as well. So let's just go ahead and copy this T6 formula. So back into the formula bar, control A, control C, down to T31, control V. Cool. And all we need to do here is add in our time value. And what is our time value going to be? So let's select time value. Let's call it, uh, just going to eyeball one on the left, 08, 11, 48. Close the double quotation marks. And then close the time value bracket. I think we're done. Hit tab. Cool, there it is there. Okay, so we've got less than. What about if we do greater than? As you can see, it's been flipped around for greater than. Awesome. Next up, we have a bonus tutorial that... Next up, we have a bonus tutorial where we explore how to filter only weekdays. So that is working days of the week from Monday through to Friday. Or weekends, sun, uh, Saturday and Sunday. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, subscribe. Until next time.